what are the ISO 27001 controls? Okay, this is gonna be a slow video, so bear with me because I've got a lot of information for you. We here at Best Practice have an ISO program, ISO 27001, where we are a certifier and also a registrar. We have a separate team of business coaches that can coach you through learning how to develop, implement, and maintain an ISO 27001 program and we can run workshops with you to teach you and empower you with the skills to do that. So what I what I wanted to do today was just go through what the ISO 27001 controls are and I've got a copy of ISO 27001 here. You can purchase hard copies of the standard from our website at bestpracticeeducation.com.au. In Annex A on page 10 of ISO 27001 there is a set of categories they're called reference control objectives and control. So reference control, objectives and control in Annex A. I'm going to just quickly read through the main categories of control so that you get a sense of where they are. Now there's 140, 114 individual controls in this table. We're not going to go through all of those in this particular video. I'd suggest purchasing a copy of the standard and reading it yourself. Okay, however, give you a quick introduction to what the controls, the categories are. The first category is information security policies and it's the control requirements for the policies you need to set for your information security management system. Then we have organization of information security and how you set up your system and how you're gonna be managing your information security. That covers internal organization, mobile devices, tele-networking, and how your system is organized. Then we go into human resource security is, uh, is the third category. And then it talks about prior to employment, during employment, termination. We go into the next main category, which is asset management, which talks about responsibility for assets, um, the classification of information, media handling. Then we go into access control, the business requirements that you're gonna set for your access controls, uh, how you're gonna handle the business requirements and also the user access management, uh, user responsibilities, uh, system and application access control. Um, then we're going into crypto cryptography and the crypto cryptographic controls that you're gonna be using. For example, a policy on the use of crypt traffic, crypt cryptographic controls for protection of information shall be developed and implemented. That's just an example there. Then we go into the next category, which is physical and environmental security. It talks about secure areas, talks about equipment, talks about um, the next category then being operation security. Uh, operation security is really interesting section. Operating procedures shall be de developed and documented and made available to the, all the users who need them. Uh, change management, changes to the organization, business processes, information processing facilities and systems that affect information security shall be controlled. Gets really technical, uh, uh, including there in that section protection from malware, uh, system backups, logging and monitoring, uh, controlling operational software, technical vulnerability management. Then we move into information security information systems audit and the considerations you need to have there. Okay, one of the final categories is communication security, how we manage network security and how we manage information transfer. We move into system acquisition, development and maintenance um, and all the parts to that. Then we go across into um, how those requirements are being met when you're looking at information system acquisition, the security and development of supporting processes and test data supplier relationships, we go and investigate supplier relationships, information security and supplier relationships, supplier service delivery management. Um, then we look more in more detail about some of the emergency management. So information security, incident management, management of information security incidents and the improvements, improvements that need to be made. Section 17, information security aspects of business continuity management. So when you have issues with the business, how do we manage our information security as we're trying to manage ourselves through a disaster, for example? Um, that also talks about what redundancies and those sorts of processes you're gonna put in for redundancies. Then we go into compliance. So any legal and other requirements are investigated in section 18, and that is the end. So you can see there's 18 sections in the Annex A of controls that make up 114 controls in ISO 27001. It's a mouthful, lots of detail there. If you want some more detailed information, there are two great webinars in the e-learning workshops playlist right here on the Best Practice TV YouTube channel. There's a couple of other things, great resources that you can access from here, here from Best Practice. The first is we have a free ISO 27001 checklist that you can download that starts to explain all the components that you need to build for your ISO 27001 management system. And we also have a great course that you can purchase. We have an ISO 27001 
information course. It's really just business basics. It's going to give you a super head start in getting to understand ISO 27001. And one of our lead assessors here from Best Practice has presented that course. It's available in our training academy. It's online. And with a few clicks of a button in the next five minutes, you could be purchasing that course and actually already learning the information. Okay, go and check that out. That's on bestpracticeeducation.com.au and we'll pop the link to that particular course in the comments and the description below this video. Okay, my question to you right now, was this video helpful? Was it really helpful? Comment yes. If it wasn't helpful and it didn't answer the question that you have, comment no and tell me the question. Type that question in the comments below. Ask me the question so I can answer it for you and I can really help you unpack and move forward exactly what the issues are that you need to handle. Okay, thank you very much for watching. My name is Kobe Simmer. If you haven't followed me already, go and check me out on LinkedIn. Find my LinkedIn page, give me a follow or hit the connect button. I'm always happy to be connected to great professionals all over the world. Just because I'm Australian doesn't mean I don't want to be connected to you. So send me a connection invitation and comment below this video if it was helpful or if it wasn't. Now up above there's a subscribe button here on our YouTube channel. If you subscribe to the YouTube channel and turn on the notifications, you will see me right here next time when I upload a video on Best Practice TV. Bye for now.